Hello and welcome to Shark Jets, I'm Skedvis. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a touchscreen using VRIF when you're making your uh, Oculus Quest games using Unity. So if you want to watch, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so that I keep making these videos. Now, without any further ado, let's get to it. All right, so here we are in Unity uh, 2021 LTS. The only thing I've loaded on this project is VRIF so that I could have the rig. Um, and then I brought in this uh, prefab of a screen that I'm going to be using. And of course, I put in a plane so that I have a place to stand. Um, and then I also brought in a few images that I've converted to sprites so that I have something to show on the screen. So the first thing you're going to want to do is VRIF has colliders in the fingertips. Uh, so you'll need to find those and assign a layer to them. So you could dig through the rig and go to the player controller, camera, blah, 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 left hand, right hand, dig through all that stuff if you want. Uh, but it's a lot easier to just search for it up here. It's called the UI trigger. So if you search for UI, it'll come up and you can see there's two of them. One is for the left controller, the left hand, and one is for the right controller and the right hand. So I'm just going to pick the right hand one here and we're going to need to assign a layer to it. Yours might be set to ignore raycast or it might be set to something else, uh, but we want a specific layer for this finger. So you can go to layers, add layer. I'm just going to come in here and create a new layer called fingertip. And then again, I'm going to just assign fingertip to that collider. So we're done with that part. Let's collapse all this. And then in order to have uh, UI buttons, we're going to need to bring in a canvas. So I'm just going to right click UI canvas. And I don't know why that expanded again, but we'll close this. So here we have the canvas. Um, and the first thing we'll want to do here is turn off this Raycaster because the Raycaster will have fire that laser from your fingertip and you don't want that in this specific example. So the next thing is you'll want to change the screen space from overlay to world space so that it's not uh, expecting it to be a UI component. It's it's just not going to be you can manipulate it in the in the 3d world uh, so we'll do that set it to world space um, and then we'll just do a reset here so that you can see that it just appeared there in the middle of the map so position 000, zero, zero. Um, and then i'm going to set the scale to 0 0.001 because it's way too big by default so 0 0.001 for this as well and then uh, finally, I'm going to drag it into my prefab so that they're kind of in the same place. So I'll just drag that into this touch screen. Um, when I did that, you can see that the position changed. So I'll make sure to zero that out as well. Okay, so now it's inside the prefab. And so we're going to want a visual representation of this canvas. So I'm just going to add an image. So again, go to UI image. And now we have an image there and I'm going to take this image and tell it to stretch to fit the canvas by clicking over here and selecting this uh, stretch on both sides X and Y so that it fits. Um, and so we can't see the image that's because it's in the middle of this um, prefab. So we want to pull it out until we can see it and you can see it just popped out there. So just get it out there enough. Now I'm just going to zoom in here real quick. All right, so now we want to go ahead and resize the canvas. So by default, it's set to 100 by 100 when you reset it. So we'll just stretch it out so that it reaches the edge. And then we'll also adjust the height so that it uh, reaches the top. All right, so now I'm going to set a default image for the screen. So I've got an image here called HUD. Just going to drag that in there. And now you can see we have a nice little screen. 
So a screen is useless without buttons. So the next thing I'll do is go into the canvas and right click and go to UI button text mesh pro. And that will add a button for me. I can't see the button. So let me just make sure that everything is at a zero position. Oh, did I move the wrong thing? I did, I moved the wrong thing. So I had the image selected when I moved it forward. I wanted to have the canvas selected. So we just saw that was uh, 0 0.19. I think it was negative 0.19. There we go. So now you can see the button and the image. Um, you gotta be careful. Like I just showed you, you click the wrong thing and move it and you're not gonna get what you expect. So make sure you're moving the root. So here we go, we have a button on the screen and uh, I'm just gonna set this button color to, I don't know, just a different, a different blue color. Make it match that image a little better. Um, and I'm just gonna move that to the side right here. I think I'll go with green. Yeah. All right, so now comes the script we're gonna make and so I'll just collapse all this and add a new component. I'm gonna make a new script called Button Collider. I'll add that. And then I will open up my code editor. All right, so now as usual, I'm gonna go ahead and type in some code and then I'll come back and explain it. All right, so from the top, uh, we have using Unity Engine because we are um, using Unity Engine.ui because there are many things called button and we want to make sure we're using the right kind of button. Uh, then we have this attribute here that says require component button and that makes sure that this script only runs on a object that has a button on it. We don't want to cause any issues by trying to access a button that doesn't exist. So here we have a uh, variable called uh, button. It is a private variable of type button. So this is gonna be the reference to the button. And if I say button one more time, I'm going to go crazy. Um, and then uh, the next thing here is a serialized field. And this is going to contain the layer that we want to allow to collide with this object. So it's a variable called layer. It is a layer mask. Um, and this will give us a little drop down in the editor so that we can pick the layer that we want to use. So then in the start method, the first thing we're going to do is assign the button to the variable. Um, and then we're going to create a box collider and add it to this game object. And then we're going to get the size of the button, uh, the X and Y height and width. Um, and assign it to this button rect variable. And then we're going to just uh, get the specific size here um, and assign it to a variable called size delta. So it's basically, I could have done this in one line, but I just did it in two. Um, and then the next thing we're going to do is set the box collider size to match the size of the button. So we're creating a new vector three with X and Y from the button. And then the Z, we're actually going to set it to 0.001F because you don't want the button to be so big that you can click it from a mile away, right? So you want it to be as small as possible so your fingertip has to actually touch the button. Uh, so that's what that's doing. And then finally, since we've added a collider, we can use the on trigger enter to detect what has collided with the box collider. So all we're doing here is we're saying if the value of the layer that we picked in the dropdown matches the layer of the game object that has collided with it, uh, then trigger that button's on click event. Easy enough. So let's go back to the editor. And if we look at the button now, you'll see it has this layer dropdown which lets you pick which layers are going to interact with it. So we'll pick fingertip to make sure that uh, only your fingertip 
when it collides with the button, it's gonna trigger the button's click event. So on the button itself, there's the click event. So you'll need to assign an action to happen when you click the button. So in my case, what I'm gonna do is just set the image to something else. I'll drag the image into this and then come over here and go to image and set sprite, just sprite. And then we can pick something else here. So I've got a destiny image here. So now when I click this button, it's going to change this image image to an, a different image that I have. So that's that. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and clone this button by pressing Control D. Um, this will give me a second button so I can move this one down. And I'm just gonna change the wording on the first one to say destiny. And I will change the wording on the second one to say logo. And then um, I will add one more. And this one will just say, uh, oh. So I changed the text on the buttons. Now I got to change the image. So again, go to the image. See, this one's still set to Destiny 2. So I'm going to drag my logo into it. And then this one is still set to Destiny 2. So I'm going to set this back to the HUD. All right, so now I've got three buttons. Uh, I forgot to move the third one. So let me do that right now. Okay. Now I've got three buttons and three different images load when you click them. Um, they're all set to respond to the fingertip. So if uh, all goes according to plan, this should work. Let's try it out. All right, so here we are. There's the screen. There's our hand. And if I come over here and press this with anything other than the right index finger, um, nothing happens. But if I come over here and touch these, you can see that it switches to the different images that I have assigned to those buttons. Uh, so, like I said, this only works with the collider that's in that fingertip, um, and that, that collider is set to only respond to the specific layer of fingertip. So that's why this one doesn't work. I would have to go in there and set this fingertip to the layer fingertip as well, and then it would work. But uh, until then, you can see that we can just push these buttons and swap images. I'm going to go ahead and fix one thing real quick. So I don't like the way that it's scaling these images. So the way to fix that is just go back to the image component. And right here it says preserve aspect. That, that'll make sure that it's not stretching it out. You can see right there it switches it back to normal. So let's try that one more time. All right, so this time the images don't fit perfectly. You can see that there's kind of an edge there. So you'll have to account for that. Uh, but right now we can go ahead and hit Destiny and that looks fine. The logo, perfect circle instead of a weird oval. And then we can go back to the home screen. And that's how you would do it. And of course you could trigger a whole bunch of different events with a button click. So you could play sounds or animations or videos or whatever you want when you click the button. You could change the button's color to indicate that it's been clicked. Um, all kinds of nice stuff like that. But this is just to get you started. And as you can see, it wasn't that complicated. So uh, that's how you do it. And there you have it, quick and easy as usual. If you found this video helpful, please make sure to hit the like and subscribe button so that I keep making more. Uh, if you want the code for today's episode, the link to that is in the description as well, uh, along with all of my other code. So uh, thanks again for watching. I'm still Skidvis. Peace out.